So this is the 800 pound Beamer we bought for Jono. He wants one to then have to do skintings. We managed to get it running outside Co Park, but it was running in limp. It was running. Oh, uh, it was running rough. Yeah, it was running rough. It was running in limp mode, and it won't rev past two th two and a half k revs. <laughs> oh, we're running with Miss Fast. Miss Fast. So yeah, in the last video, we got compression test done. Um, everything was fine with the compression test. Put new plugs in because the other plugs were knackered. Yeah, so while we were at Co Park, we noticed the mass sensor was missing. So we've ordered one. It's turned up and he's got it there. Whoever took it out, put the screws back yeah, in. No Very nice of them, that. Yeah. It run like well better once we've done the compression test and it stopped misfiring, hasn't it? Yeah. But it still wouldn't rev fast or over two and a half K. And then engine management lights on, so we're open. Mass sensor goes in, delete the code if it'll delete. And what does the map sensor do? What's it measures like? air to petrol. So just, the... just measures the amount of air that's going in so the car can determine how much fuel to put with that. So you get your, your proper ratio, which of is 14.7 14 14 .7 to 1, right. something like that. I don't know what it's called, stoichiometric. Stoichiometric? Yeah. Stoichy? Yeah, it's very stoichy that. Yeah, like a stoichy sock. <laughs> that sounds sick. So to fit this new mass sensor to the car, all you got to do is literally slide it into the hole that's designated for it, just behind the air filter box, and tighten the screws down and just plug it in. Being very careful not to drop the Allen key. So, lovely stuff. Put that down there a minute, didn't want it anyway. Yeah. So now that that's fitted, the next thing to do is start the car. But just before that, we're going to plug in the diagnostics and see if we've got any faults with it first. Now, we had a few. There was not a major, but the one that stood out was to do with the Valotronic servo motor, which could be an issue to why the car is not starting, idling or revving properly. OK, so there's the math one. We've got an intake camshaft, which we think that might be the Valvotronic. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, actuator. Right, I'm just going to have to delete anyway because that's on. So we've deleted all the codes and now we're just going to quickly start it and see if the mass sensors sorted that out or not. Now we don't think it has because there's a couple of other issues like the Valvotronic servo motor fault. That could potentially be the reason why the car isn't starting up properly. But we'll give it a go anyway and see what happens. But still. Very petrol is that if that Valvatronic motor has got the cam adjusted to like all the way open, it's probably injecting too much. You know yeah. like Which is why it smells proper petrol. Possibly, yeah. But no better. Right. I deleted them, two of them went off. So I thought I'd just give it a try and they've come back on as soon as you run it, so Definitely proper faults like. Okay. It's the Valvatronic actuator motor that we need to change next. We'll wait for that to come. Yeah. And then we'll get that on. Alrighty. So the next bloody job, Mike. So like Andy said there, it's no better. So the next thing to do will be trying to sort out this Valvatronic server motor problem. I'm also starting to get the feeling that this car is going to be problematic throughout the build. So before we carry on with today's video, I want to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, which is Vehicle Score. Vehicle Score is an online car checker that helps you out. So if you don't want to be buying a categorized car, stolen car, or one that's even on finance, don't just buy it, Vehicle Score it. So today we're going to show you how Vehicle Score works on using a previous build we did, which was Dan's mum's Jaguar E-Pace. And if you want to save yourself 20%, don't forget to use code TVR20 at checkout or click the link in the description below. Now with this E-Pace that we're going to check out now, we bought it as a Cat S, but we have done a check on another site and it's coming back as uncategorized. Now we're going to see if vehicle score can tell us the truth. So we're going to put the reg in, which is Mike Juliet, 68, uniform, Lima, whiskey, and hit enter. So here it's given us a number of 860 out of a possible 999, which is saying it's amazing. It's six years old, it's done 52,000 miles with an average yearly mileage of 8,600 and the MOT comments are good. So as we scroll down, we can see this is the important information that you really need when you're buying a car. This will tell you if it's ever been imported, if it's a salvage car, if it's on finance, if it's ever stolen. So all you gotta do is click buy it now, not forgetting to use the promo code TVR20. Now it's generated the report, we can check all the important information out. And here it's clearly saying it's been an insurance category right off. So if we scroll further down, we can actually look at that later on. 
it's had three previous owners which isn't bad but most importantly there's no outstanding finance and it's never been stolen and we can scroll down a bit further and here's the information on the insurance category so we can clearly see it comes back as a, back as a cat s like we thought it was so vehicle score has actually picked it up that it is a categorized car as we did a check on another online car checker and that was coming back that it was uncategorized so as we scroll down there's more information on the score breakdown but you'll have to check that one out for yourselves so there we are there's our report on the jaguar e-pace now it actually has says it's a cat s so at least we know so again i want to say a massive thank you to vehicle score for sponsoring today's video and don't forget to use code tvr20 for 20% off or click the link in the description below bad shitting everywhere man it's around three on the beamer round three isn't it something like that yeah three four you only ever get a chance to spend about 20 minutes of time on it yeah look we yank right so in the last one we put the airflow meter on which obviously it needed but didn't make a difference to how it ran now we've got the valvatronic motor um, which it's thrown another code up about this so that, you do we do we try and run it now and see if it runs any different <clears> or do we just fit it anyway? What now that you've unplugged it? Yeah. Like that fella. Go ahead. Yeah. Do that actually. That lad said that, didn't he? Yeah. So one of the comments. So one of the comments said about the valvatronic motor. If that goes, it can cause it to run dodgy. He said if you unplug it, it should revert back to a factory setting. So it's unplugged now. Go on. Ready. <clears throat> yeah, so we're still the same. Yeah. Right. And so that doesn't work. Not by taking the wire off. So. Good shout, but didn't work. Yeah. So it might mean we, we might have to delete the codes as well. We don't know about. Yeah, whap the new one in. You've got it. Mm. Whap it. Yeah, whap it. EGO. Yeah. Mad that, isn't it? <laughs> What's an e BMW Ego? EGO? BMW Ego, 330i. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this BM's got an Ego, lad. So the next thing to do is fit this Valvatronic servo motor and see if it gets any better. So to do this, simply unscrew the three bolts that hold it in, and I say simply, two are simple, one's awkward as, but it is only three bolts. And then we'll swap it out for the new one. So now that that's fitted, we're going to clear the fault codes and try and start it and see what happens. Try and start it. We'll try again. <clears throat> So it's got to be all the way that in. Out. Yeah, so turn it off a sec just in case it does anything. So, as you can see here, with it running really rough, the revs are slightly getting better, but Andy's manually adjusting the Valvatronic servo motor. Now, it should automatically calibrate itself, but it's not doing so, I think there's still an issue. Serve it a bit. Ah, oh, yeah. Roll fevs, look at that. It don't go heavy like. It's not a do skid now, that. Yeah, I don't know how to set that up. But it's, it is that, that's cool, isn't it? Ah. Lumpy is buggery, isn't it? Right. Wait, wait there. Oh, I'd already pushed it. Try it again, with it plugged in. Oh, I see, it wasn't plugged in. No, I just adjusted ah. it with this. Give it a bit of a rev. Ah, that's not going to be made up, isn't it? Revs. You not even had it red. Yeah. So, literally, in the in the end of here, you've got something that you can turn. Now, it turned it one way completely and it wouldn't start. Turned it completely the other way, but it didn't seem to want to stop. It kept going. There's definitely still issues. Oh, yeah. Like you say, each but, time it gets better and better. This yeah, thing. we are. So, literally, in the in the end of here, You've got something that you can turn. Now, I turned it one way completely and it wouldn't start. Turned it completely the other way, 
but it didn't seem to want to stop it kept going <clears throat> then it wouldn't start there so i brought it back a bit and that's when we got it started and when it was running i turned it a little bit more and we've got it to the point where it's revving now so we just need to learn Badly how to set though. that up yeah uh, yeah it's obviously not running right yet it needs setting up properly but off. yeah go on turn it off at least it revs we've got somewhere we know that's the issue but do you know who should ring brett brett yeah <clears throat> Brett's our local beamer specialist. He's the one who we spoke to about the servo motor on the M4. Once we spoke to him, we'll get back to you and we'll let you know what the outcome of that is. Because sometimes it's worth just asking someone who knows than wrecking dread for days, isn't it? Yeah, that's all. 100%. That's the man. Yeah. Right, guys, so we've left the car for a couple of days, but today we're back at it. It's where we are, back on Jono's 330i E90. I think today. We're going to try and get the rocker cover done, get all them oil leaks sorted, but it looks a mess. We noticed there's two broken studs here, so that'll be a big cause of the leaks. And we're going to try and tackle some of these oil leaks. To do this, we need to remove the Valvotronic servo motor, unbolt the rocker cover and lift it off so we can see inside the engine and see what's going on, where these leaks are coming from. And while we're there, we might get lucky and be able to figure out why the Valvotronic servo motor is not actuating itself automatically. That is not going to be fun at all with a gasket and gluing everything on. This, this is what's causing the leak, this thing. It looks like it's had a leak in the past because someone's absolutely bladdered it in sticky stuff. Yeah, like Liam's mask. How does this thing work like then? Which the velvet tunic. Mm -hmm. oh, it's got chunks missing out of that there, do you think we find? Don't want to start changing cams, do you? Oh, it's a nightmare. Right, so now we've got the rocker cover out of the way and we can see inside the engine. We've noticed there's a slight bit of damage to the cog that the Valvotronic servo motor actuates on. And it turns out it's missing a few teeth, which is a major problem as it's going to have to be replaced. So we're going to get on with the job and take it out. Sick. I shouldn't open this one. Why? I think that's knackered. And I think, do you know when it struggles to start? When it turns over eight for ages before it start it might be because that is stuck in the wrong position what so it's not the the motor that goes knackered it's the well they cam. both do don't they yeah that old motor might have been just like stuck somewhere i just hope you don't have to take the cam chain off to do it but is he gonna want to pay for that do you know what i mean yeah so it's looking like he's gonna need a camshaft while we're trying to camshaft i don't know he's not gonna be happy before we tackle the Valvotronic cam, we're going to remove these snap bolts. So we've got two broken studs in there and in there, and that could be a cause of our oil leaks, obviously. There's no pressure holding the rock cover down. So I'm going to try and drill them. And we've got easy outs. I don't know if you know what they are, but... Yeah. Basically, like a corkscrew. And as I thread that in, you thread it in, which turns out to be like reversing the, the stud out. If you get, if that makes sense. I can't think of a better way to explain it, to be honest. So as I'm screwing that in, it's backward thread, and it'll end up screwing the other one out, if it works. Sometimes they're a bit too tight, and then if it comes to that, I'll have to helicoil it. So, we're probably not gonna hear nothing because the Uber's gonna be on. <coughs> Right, so I've drilled a hole straight through that stud there. I'm just going to chuck the easy out in now and see if it will spin it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends how seized the uh, stud is. Oh, lovely. The easy is that. And that's how easy that is. The easy out with the easy outs. <laughs> and there you go. So, I'll have to get two pair of plier on it. Two pairs of plier. <laughs> two pairs of pliers. <laughs> but as you can see, as I thread that in, it pulls that one out. And that's as easy as that. So now we've got the snap bolts out of the way, which they come out a hell of a lot easier than snap bolts normally do come out. Sometimes it can be an absolute nightmare. So next we're going to move on to this Valvotronic camshaft. To do this, we do need a specialised tool. Now they're not really dear, but they're about 70 to 80 quid. So we're going to make our own tool and crack on with it. To take these springs off these valves for the Valvotronic, Valvotronic cam. You need to order some of the specialist tool. Crazy stupid specialist tool. 
But we don't do that here, do we? No. <laughs> no we chance. make our own. Well, that's what this is. That's what this is, I'll show you now. Because we'll probably never do this again on another car. There's no point in going and spending freaking 500 quid or whatever this stupid cost is for a tool that you're not going to use again. The problem with that is... Hey, safety in there. Yeah, safety glasses. You've got to get that spring from behind, the little roller bit down there. And they're under mega tension. Yeah. So how do you do that? Push. Push and twist. That's half the tension off. And then we've got to put a bar. Where's the bar? Yeah, the, here's the next step. So it's basically a bar like that. Either side of the spring. And then a straight bar. With a little tiny cutout in the top for the spring to sit in. And just sham for that edge up. No messing about here. Full demonstration on here. Oh yeah, you know <clears> this. <throat> It'll love a good demo. Slide the bar through the holes in the springs. And I'll push, push that down. down with two spanners. Undo that. And then undo that nut. Bare bolt, take that out. And then this'll this will fold back round to out there. Should we do one now? Do you wanna do you need me to do something? Yeah, go on. You you do that. I'll hold this. Wait, let me get the pressure. Go on. Yeah. Go on fast. Sorry, people, I'm gonna say. And then just Release the pressure back up. Voila. Viola. Viola, spring off. It's Juan. It's stuck in. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, you've got to get, basically, if you don't take the tension off them when you take the there bolt out the top. You can clean all them while they're out as well. If you don't take the tension off the spring there with the two spanners, when you're taking the bolt out, you rip the last threads out, however off the bolt or out the, the Out the hole, and you don't want it out the hole, no, especially. I'd rather the bolt than the hole. To be honest. That'll be cast alley, won't it? So it'll rip this first. That'll be steel. Yeah, that'll be steel, won't it? So anyway, and that this... bit there is cast with the head in it. Yeah, so you'd have so to you buy a whole new head. Buy a new, yeah, full head. Yeah. Full head replacement. Now this should be loose now. So with all the springs released of pressure and the bolts removed, we can then remove the Valvotronic cam caps and then we can remove the camshaft and inspect the damage more. What did you say before? Is there a director? Oh, I that, you know? Yeah, I know Eric Sean. Eric Sean, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Eric Sean, don't know. She never get an Eric Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know Eric Sean. <laughs> oh, fucking how old are we? Look at Eric Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're full grown adults. Hello. Sure, that's yeah. There you go. Now that should come up, are we? There we go. And she's out. Yeah. Woo! Let me just walk wipe my hands and we'll show you. Look down them, down that way. Chewed up to death. Yeah. And that stops it moving nice and freely, which throws codes up and makes it run like crap. Yep. So we need one of them. It's a little bit different as well, because it's a lovely day. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. So after figuring out the camshaft knackered, we've ordered the new one, we're going to have to wait a few days for it to come. But this BMW's turned out to be a bit more of a bigger job than we originally thought it would be, and taking a lot more time than we thought it would as well. Because we've got other cars to do on the channel, we're probably going to park this one up for a little bit, figure out what we need to do and what's involved with the issues that we're having, and we'll come back to it at a later date. So while we're waiting for the Valvotronic cam to turn up, John has reached out to an American based YouTube channel who have made a video on common problems to do with the M52 engine in the BMW and they replied to us with an in-depth video of possible problems that we might be having with this car just to see if they could point us in the right direction to sort on these issues we're having out. How's it going everybody? My name's Austin and this is Zach from 8020 Media and before we started we just wanted to thank the Transfer Motion guys for using us as their BMW resource. The M52 is often considered BMW's last naturally aspirated straight six engine that they produced before they began focusing solely on turbo engines. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and discuss some of the most common issues with the BMW N52 straight six engine. Number one, we have Vanos solenoids. When it comes to the variable valve timing or the Vanos system, the solenoids are typically the most troublesome component. 
So when the solenoids go bad, one easy way to essentially diagnose it without actually having to replace the Vanos solenoids, oftentimes simply cleaning the solenoids will at least remedy the issues. Moving on to our second common problem for the N52, we have lifter tick, and ultimately that could cause some oiling issues to the lifters, which would cause the engine or the cylinder head to develop a lifter tick. Moving on to our third common problem for the N52, we have water pump failure. Out of all the things that, that I'm discussing on this list, of common N52 problems, the water pump is likely the single most common issue. So BMW had opted for an electric water pump. And so there are really two different ways that this water pump can fail. And that is either electrically or the composite impeller braking. And unfortunately, there really isn't a long-term solution or a perfect fix for the water pump and tends to only last about 50 to 100,000 miles. It's really a miracle for any of these water pumps to make it much past that 100,000 mile mark. Last but not least for common N52 engine problems, combining two things together here and just classifying it as oil leaks. Both the valve cover gasket and the oil filter housing gasket are two very common oil leaks on the BMW N52 engine. They are a little bit less problematic since the N52 is not turbocharged. It doesn't have the extra cylinder pressures and the extra heat, which can really take a toll on both the valve cover and oil filter housing gaskets. But these are still two common oil leaks that tend to pop up in the roughly 60 to 100,000 mile ballpark. And there really isn't a long-term solution. Just sticking with the OEM gaskets is the best option. Anyway, guys, that wraps up our section on the N52 overview and some common problems. So there you go, guys. That was 8020. And we just want to say a massive thank you for them for getting involved and trying to help us sort this Beamer problem out. If you'd like to watch their full video breakdown on N52 common problems, please go check it out on their website. We'll put a link to it in the description below. And if you could go over and give them a subscribe, it would help them out and we'd really appreciate it. Right guys, so we fitted the new camshaft and we put Humpty Dumpty all back together again. So now's the big moment to see whether it works properly or not. It's like battery time, isn't it? But it's Do it again then. Well, you're putting the wire on each time there, yeah? Yeah. Leave it off a sec. What? Have you put it on? The wire's on, yeah. Leave it on. Yeah. Pull the wire off. Try and turn that now. A bit more. This sounds revving up a bit more. Wow. Keep going. So that didn't go to plan. The Valvatronic servo motor should have automatically calibrated itself. It did do a little bit extra than what it has been doing, but not fully. So we're at a bit of a loss for this and I don't really know what to do. Although we have actually got one more thing to try. We're gonna swap out the Valvatronic servo motor for the old one, just in case on the off chance that we have been messing around with a second hand dud motor. Just one Cornetto. <laughs> <laughs> so guys we did swap the old Volvotronic servo motor and put it back on the car but once again it didn't work and the car is still running really badly so we've kind of had to tap out on this one and do what i've been trying to avoid the whole time and that's send this to a bms specialist so very kindly our mate mike from zed shed said he'll have a look at this for us and see if he can point us in the right direction so we've got the car booked in with him for next week but we're not gonna get that in this video and sadly, we're gonna have to call it here, which is not the way you wanna end a video, but 
this is the reality of where the project's up to. It's not gone to plan. It's burnt all of our heads out. And the dream of drifting this 330 seems even further away than it was when we started this video. But we're not gonna give up here. We're gonna take the Beamer to Mike next week and hopefully he can figure out what's going on.